Yes. Yep. Okay. What I want to do is summarize a bit of my own research uh, along with this article, which is part of our class. Environmental racism. This would be the interaction of space, place, and in this case, an ethnic hierarchy. And Pello argues for an interesting phenomenon. He says this is not only a social phenomenon, that in most cases, an environmental dimension to racism is involved with taking land, materials, or labor, and forcing these groups into another structure of hierarchies without full participation. You can think of how Europeans expanded around the world, and slaves suddenly got a racial quality, and they lacked political participation. Slavery doesn't always have to have a racial quality. There are many other examples around the world. And I'll use the PowerPoint to summarize uh, these things. We'll close that. Okay. Environment and social stratification. You can think about overclasses and underclasses. We're keeping in mind this is a spectrum. So which ethnicities and which cultures become dominant in a multicultural society, and which ones are coded for the lower class status positions. With this hierarchy comes bad environments at the lower level. In the United States, this, using US terms, is called environmental racism. But I want to argue this is not connected by definition to race. We've seen Japan. It's not a different race. It's not a different ethnicity that creates the broad meat. It's just a different religious classification and job classification over time. They're all Japanese, but that has created an underclass. So I would, you can think about this as environmental underclasses, I think is a more neutral term, and not environmental racism. This is too US-centric, in my opinion. It's far too US-centric for a global phenomenon that this is. So don't get caught with this word. This is from Para, a Cody Para, where social inequalities in society exist, uh, environmental inequalities also prevail. Our basic ideas of what constitutes social and ethnic inequality should be reevaluated in light of this data. Human settlements have always been dependent on natural resources, he says. And social inequalities produce relationships whereby marginal and less powerful groups of people were concentrated in the least desirable residential and occupational areas. It's not just occupation, but it's space, space in general. Frequently, stratification in environment is additionally based on an ethnic or religious minority group. So you have multiple layers growing, which makes the divisions even stronger. Hundreds of studies have established a general pattern known variously as environmental racism, environmental inequality, or environmental injustice. But in a bigger word, in a more general term, is environmental underclass. The areas of research comes from what is called the environmental justice movements. These are movements of minorities and underclasses complaining about their environmental conditions. It also, in the United States history, most waste storage occurs where black Americans live or reside. And it doesn't occur anywhere else. It's very strongly correlated with ethnic location. Neighborhoods, playgrounds, schools, workplaces where underclasses exist have been disproportionately burdened with toxic, uh, hazardous waste from leaking underground tanks, oil spills, mine tailings, chemicals stockpiled in metal drums, nuclear waste. Waste creation, you know, where are the most polluting industries? They're typically in the most politically powerless areas. Pollution from industrial smokestacks, agricultural facilities, congested freeways, bus depots, waste dumping. You, get, you create great waste in the underclass area, and you dump waste in the underclass area. Garbage accumulation and processing tend to occur in disproportionately marginal groups. And of course, the waste create dangers of toxic experience in different occupations. So not only within space, but within their occupations tend to be very toxic. You know, agricultural pet petrochemicals, people who work in healthcare, uh, janitorial with cleaning chemicals, a lot of painters in the United States come from ethnic underclasses. And paints can 
Most painters don't live very long. Most painters don't live very long at all. Basic manufacturing, heavy chemicals for cleaning computers, for instance, particularly in the United States, high technology sectors, even high technology has this phenomenon to see. 